Welcome to the comprehensive SESC plan review and design of pressure cores module three. In this module, we will be discussing inspections, permitting, and enforcement in greater detail. The primary goal of part 91 is to protect waters of the state and adjacent properties by minimizing erosion and controlling offsite sedimentation resulting from earth changes. There are three types of SESC agencies, county enforcing agencies or CEAs, municipal enforcing agencies or MEAs, and authorized public agencies or APAs. We will look at each of these agencies in more detail in a moment. EGLE provides training, compliance assistance, and program oversight for CEAs, MEAs, and APAs. Part 91 of the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act, or NREPA, and Part 17, the Associated Administrative Rules, comprise the SESC legislation for the state of Michigan. Both Part 91 and Rule 17 are enforceable. SESC agency staff should become familiar with both Part 91 and Rule 17. Now we will describe each type of SESC agency in more detail. Counties are required to administer and enforce Part 91 as county enforcing agencies or CEAs. Each county board designates an agency or department to act as the CEA and can implement Part 91 by means of a resolution or an ordinance. Section 9105 of Part 91 describes CEA responsibilities. Cities, villages, and townships can voluntarily administer a Part 91 program as a municipal enforcing agency or MEA and must pass an ordinance to do so. Section 9106 of Part 91 describes MEA responsibilities. State and local units of government that commonly undertake earth changes such as drain commissioners and road commissions can be designated as an APA. APAs must develop procedures and obtain approval from EGLE. Approved APAs are not required to obtain Part 91 permits from local SESC agencies, but still must communicate with the local CEAs and MEAs about projects. Section 9110 of Part 91 describes APA responsibilities. As mentioned previously, EGLE provides training, compliance assistance, and program oversight for CEAs, MEAs, and APAs, and also promulgates rules and reviews ordinances and procedures. Now, let's look at the difference between a resolution and an ordinance. A resolution is a document stating that a county accepts Part 91 as written. Under a resolution, fines are sent to the state. Only CEAs can implement Part 91 through a resolution. An ordinance may be adopted by either a CEA or an MEA, and it's a document that may be written to be more restrictive than Part 91. Additionally, an ordinance can be written to ensure fines go to the local agency. Ordinances cannot be less restrictive than Part 91 and must be approved by EGLE. It should be noted that if an ordinance is written to be more restrictive than Part 91, it must still be within the scope of Part 91, and the agency must have the ability to enforce the language in the ordinance. All changes and updates to ordinances or resolutions must be reviewed and approved by EGLE. Therefore, draft changes should be submitted to EGLE for review before adoption. Inspections are an important component for running a successful SESC program and for managing a successful project or site. Inspections must be thorough, well-documented, and frequent enough to ensure compliance can be maintained. Thorough inspections include a complete site walkthrough and pictures are highly recommended for documentation purposes. Inspection frequency can depend on several factors, such as proximity to surface water, soil type on site, and slope conditions. An inspection matrix is recommended to help ensure inspection frequency is adequate and consistent between sites. 
On prioritizing sites for inspections and inspection frequency, here are some factors to consider. Are steep slopes present on site? What is the soil type on site? What is the size of the project? What is the timeline for the project? Is the site near or adjacent to critical or sensitive areas such as wetlands? What is the current and proposed cover for the site? Is it currently vegetated? And when will the site be stabilized? Inspection frequencies may change over time as on-site conditions evolve. As mentioned previously, Inspections should be thorough and include a complete site walkthrough. Eagle may request to review inspection reports to ensure inspections are being conducted at an adequate frequency, that reports include adequate detail, and to review whether similar on-site conditions or issues were noted. If inadequate site conditions and SCSC control measures, such as those shown in the pictures above, are noted during an inspection, a review of the inspection logs for the site should reflect similar conditions. If reviewed inspection logs do not note these inadequacies, additional follow-up will likely be necessary. SCSC agencies are required to maintain documentation relevant to Part 91. It is recommended that records are retained for at least five years. Documentation to be retained includes, but is not limited to, Permit applications, SCSC plans, permits, inspection reports, and compliance and enforcement documents. Enforcing agencies are responsible to regulate earth changes at sites regardless of whether or not the site is permitted. Even though a site may not require a permit, it must still maintain site conditions compliant with Part 91. Therefore, it may become necessary for agency staff to inspect unpermitted sites and even issue compliance or enforcement actions for sites with uncontrolled erosion or off-site discharges of sediment. All SESC permits are required to have state prescribed conditions and information on every permit. An example SESC permit containing the minimum required information can be found on EGLE's SESC webpage. Agency-specific permit conditions can also be used to help drive compliance. Agencies should consider adding permit-specific conditions to issued permits. Examples of permit-specific conditions include required weekly street sweeping and specific inlet protection to be used. Additional examples include requiring a deadline for construction of sediment basins or stormwater ponds, and a mandatory deadline for vegetation of spoil piles. The following four slides will provide an overview of permit exemptions. However, Part 91 and Rule 17 should be consulted for specific details as not all exemptions will be covered. The acts of logging and mining are exempt. However, associated access roads and ancillary activities are not exempt. The definition of mining does not include the removal of clay, gravel, sand, peat, or topsoil. Therefore, the removal of these materials is not exempt and still requires permits. In most cases, oil and gas exploration and development is exempt from obtaining an SESC permit if permitted under Part 615 or Part 625 with an SESC plan approved by EGLE under Part 615 or Part 625. Normal road and driveway maintenance that does not increase the length or width of the road or driveway and that will not contribute sediment to lakes or streams is exempt. Some additional exemptions commonly encountered include but are not limited to minor earth changes stabilized within 24 hours, residential gardening with no raising of the natural elevation, residential post holes with no additional grading or earth change, and residential tree, shrub, and stump removal not to exceed 100 square feet. It should be noted that these exemptions are only valid if the earth change activities do not result in 
or contribute to soil erosion or sedimentation of the water to the state or a discharge of sediment off-site. Maintaining compliance at sites is an important part of implementing an effective SESC program. SESC agencies should have a set of compliance and enforcement procedures that clearly outline the various steps to enforce compliance on sites. The procedures should provide a clear, consistent path for moving through the enforcement process if escalated enforcement is needed for a site. Some compliance and enforcement options agencies may use include the following. Double permit fee, requiring a permit for a site, bond, cash, certified check, or irrevocable letter of credit, fines, cease and desist, stop work order, liens, court injunction, and corrective actions. Enforcing agencies should always consult corporate counsel to ensure compliance and enforcement actions are legal, enforceable, and appropriate. In some cases, monetary penalties may be necessary. Section 9121 of Part 91 sets maximum monetary penalties. Enforcing agencies can set up individual fee schedules that cannot exceed the limits set in Part 91. When a site is fully stabilized, the permit can be terminated. Rule 17 defines stabilization as the establishment of vegetation or the proper placement, grading, or covering of soil to ensure its resistance to soil erosion, sliding, or other earth movement. The final determination of whether a site is stabilized can be tricky, and a complete site walkthrough should be completed before making a determination. Additionally, all temporary SESC measures should be removed prior to permit termination. Areas near surface water will require a close inspection to ensure vegetation, riprap, and other stabilization measures are adequate to prevent erosion and sedimentation. Areas of sparse vegetation will require additional time for vegetation growth and may also require additional seed and mulch. Temporary SESC measures should be left in place and maintained until the site is fully stable. If you have questions, contact the Eagle SESC staff person assigned to your county. This map can be found on the Eagle SESC webpage. Thank you for your participation and interest in this training. Your efforts will ultimately help protect the invaluable surface waters of this state.